Here we are back to our section of rib. In this rib, you can see very dense pinkish material here, which it'll be, you will see as classical for cortical or dense bone, while the inside of the rib contains fat and uh, cells, uh, the fat being normally found in arm marrow and the cells being hematopoietic cells, giving rise to red cells, white cells, and platelets found in the bone marrow uh, of the bones of the central or axial rather than the uh, appendicular skeleton. Let's take some of this dense cortical bone and take a look at it and see what we could identify here. Well, the first thing you could see is that there is a pretty good uh, little peel of fibrous connective tissue, dense fibrous connective tissue, over the outer edge of the cortical bone, and that's periosteum. Even though periosteum does a lot of magical things, basically uh, it looks pretty boring. It looks like just a little piece of uh, fibrous connective tissue. Uh, and in addition, uh, you will see something similar on the deeper side of the cortical bone, which you can see here, and that will be some more boring looking connective tissue, which is the endosteum. So we have the periosteum on the outside of the dense cortical bone and the endosteum on the inner side. The dense cortical bone itself has these little circular spaces, which are called haversion canals because they form the uh, units of uh, bone formation or the haversion units in which you have the central uh, holes delivering nutrients filled with blood vessels and then growing around them in a concentric and lamellar fashion are your um, osteocytes. So almost all of the uh, longitudinal uh, canals that you see here, like here, like here, like here, surrounded by these concentric uh, osteocytes are haversion canals. They're also called the longitudinal canals. Uh, branching off at right angles, possibly here, possibly here, possibly here, branching off at right angles from these uh, haversion canals are what they call transverse or Volkmann's canals. And all they represent is just uh, some more vascular connections between the main or haversion canals. So we see periosteum, endosteum, and all of these little uh, haversion units. Let's take one like here, for example. That's a good place to start and blow it up to its highest power. And you can see the central vascular canal of the haversion or dense or cortical bone surrounded in a lamellar fashion by these small cells trapped like cartilage within lacunae. But rather than being chondrocytes, they are osteocytes. So, uh, and connecting between adjacent osteocytes, which we will see on another stain, will be smaller, tinier canals, which you can't see normally on this type of microscopy. You have to do a special kind of a stain for it will be the canaliculi, which are the smallest, tiniest filamentous connections between adjacent or nearby osteocytes. So to make a long story short, everything uh, in the center of these concentric osteocytes are haversion canals. Uh, the Volkmann's canals, perhaps here, perhaps here, branch out at 90 degrees from the haversion canals. Here is the bone substance itself uh, hydroxyapatite, chiefly calcium phosphate. Here are the actual individual osteocytes. Uh, here is the endosteum, which we see on this side, and that little, we can see bone marrow here as well. And on the other side, we can see uh, periosteum. So once again, I will ask you, like I have asked you in all of these uh, exercises, what is there in this field or any field that you could not possibly identify? I think we have properly shotgunned this slide. Perhaps one more thing I would like to mention is that when you see cells like this, uh, 
which eventually get trapped up as a concentric ring within the Haversian unit. These are actual osteoblasts. So when the osteoblast is completely trapped within hydroxyapatite, that is then called an osteocyte. Just like when a chondroblast is completely trapped up within a chondroid matrix, this goes from chondroblast to chondrocyte. In bone, it goes from osteoblast to osteocyte. Last but not least, because we are calling this shotgun histology, we've already seen the marrow. I want to show you one more little picture towards the periphery of this bone. And I think you could instantly recognize this as being skeletal muscle. You can't see the striations very well, but you can see the fact that they are big fibers and they are cut uh, transversely with respect to their longitudinal axis. And you can see that all the nuclei are at the periphery. So uh, boys and girls, here we have a uh, mature cortical dense perversion bone. And I thank you very much.